In my research, I, I have made, uh, um, and I'm going to take my time. Some of them I will show them to you. Um, I have made a research into 17 Ghanaian young businessmen who, who, became milo, who became billionaires at the age of 30 years. Clean money. My research showed me they were not doing any dubious businesses whatsoever. They were hardworking, reasonable, brainstorming people, people who were smart and articulate, who, you know, put their lives together and they reasoned and thought and worked very hard. And by the age of 30 years, they were already billionaires. Some of them were into real estate. Others were into gold business. Others were into... Um, banking and finance, others were into insurance, others were into, you know, uh, forex trading, Bitcoin uh, trading, cryptocurrency trading, and all that. They did all these kinds of business. Burn in hell. Ghana, your leaders will burn in hell. I told you, Ghanaian leaders, you will perish and burn in hell. Fire. What the Yawa Bregana for you will burn in hell. Jesus precious name somebody shout amen are you clapping give God the glory for his faithfulness and kindness hallelujah praise the name of the Lord 21 after the hour I will do my burst for us to be ending exactly at 8 o'clock grace will find us i will want to also welcome all of you to church great to see all of you i bless god for your life i thank him for his his favor and fine kindness that has been our portion let me use the opportunity to also welcome our friends on television on your television amans on television good morning to all of you and good morning to our friends on radio sweet melodies and all the sister stations across the country we are live also on some of the radio stations that are in Accra and also in the OT region. Good morning to you. Good morning to our friends on Facebook, YouTube, and podcast. Thank you very much to and TikTok. Thank you for coming to be with us this morning in God's presence. John chapter 12, verses 20 and 21. John, the 12th chapter. The 20th and the 21st verses, the Bible said, there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same therefore came to Philip, which was of that side of Galilee, and desired himself saying sir we want to see jesus or we seek we require we demand we desire to see the christ and so the reason was not for the feast or the festival the very reason was to meet or see or have an encounter and or an experience with the christ luke chapter 21 verses number 34 through to 36 look the 21st chapter the 34 to the 36 verses the bible said take it to yourselves ladies at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and the curse of this life and so that they come upon you on a worse the bible said for us as snare shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of a whole earth watch ye therefore pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of my i want you to watch and note remarkably that word all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the son of man 
you need to be also accounted worthy to escape the hour of temptation that shall come upon the whole world to try the people that live on it. This morning, I'm starting a new series. I don't know how long I will be able to push it to uh, because I have another series before the elections of Ghana. So I'm going to use the opportunity to deal with these ones uh, judiciously and try as much as possible uh, to push the, so if I don't get seven Sundays, I will do my best to push them and through Bible study so that I can be able to accomplish it. I'm going to read to you Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 11. Possibly you will have an idea what I'm talking about. The Bible said, uh, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega and the first and the last. And what thou seest, the Bible said, write in a book and send it to send it on to the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Samina, unto Pegamos, unto Tyra, unto Sardis, Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And so I'm going to use the opportunity to touch on the seven churches that are in Asia Minor. Ephesus, Samina. Pegamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I've done a similar series bef before. I am not specifically talking to the acts of the church. And I'm not specifically doing an exegesis on the seven churches that were in Asia Minor. When we mention Asia, it is not the modern day Asia. Like in China, Vietnam, uh, all those line of people. The Korea, South and North. We are not talking about that Asia. This Asia is modern day Turkey. Turkey was where the first missionary journey of Apostle Paul was precipitated. As a matter of fact, the third missionary journey was also was to Turkey. And so these seven churches that we are talking about, the day that I was landing in Istanbul, I notice in most of their provinces that these churches, even though it does not exist like this building is sitting or standing here, but the rubble, the destruction or the rudiments or the rubble, residue rubble that are left are still standing in Istanbul and in some of the provinces in Turkey right now. Now, Turkey is one of the places where Christianity was extremely dominant. But the first nation in the world to have their national flag with the full Islamic symbol in it. It tells you how that nation went from the, 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 the shades or the parameters of the grace that is in Christ into something else. If anybody tells you that the, the, maybe let me use the word religion, but I'm, I'm not looking for the word religion. Maybe I'm looking for the word faith. If everybody tells you that faith is the same, that is a big lie from the pit of hell. Osumni na nye And Osumni na are not worshipping the same God. I'm telling you the truth. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, it's as if I'm telling you, you will die and you will tell me, I don't believe in death. What you believe is of no account to this context. I'm telling you that and yet the same. That aside, I'm going to use opportunity because this series has been a, a series that is carefully researched into, prayed into. And so this morning I will begin with the church of Ephesus. But I'm not adding the church to it because I'm not talking to just the church. I'm talking to any other faith, any other religion, to even people who say they don't believe anything. I'm just having a discourse with my brothers and sisters. And I'm not only talking to Ghanaians. I'm talking to any reasonable human being that lives in the cause or in the, in the radios of wisdom and prudence. And if you really want to make life, then I'm speaking to you. Except people who are just existing and they, they really don't care about their life, let alone to care about any other thing that is around them. In my research, I, I have made a, 
um, and I'm going to take my time. Some of them I will show them to you. Um, I have made a research into 17 Ghanaian young businessmen who who became million, who became billionaires at the age of 30 years. Clean money. My research showed me they were not doing any dubious businesses whatsoever. They were hardworking, reasonable, brainstorming people, people who were smart and articulate, who, you know, put their lives together and they reasoned and thought and worked very hard. And by the age of 30 years, they were already billionaires. Some of them were into real estate, others were into gold business, others were into um, banking and finance, others were into insurance, others were into, you know, uh, forex trading, Bitcoin uh, trading, cryptocurrency trading, and all that. They did all these kinds of business. As I'm speaking to you right now, 17 of them have all lost their wealth. All 17. Government have seized some of their businesses. Most of their businesses have been shut down. They have gone, you know, undercover to start other businesses. But one of the most painful things is that one of them is serving a prison term in Insawem prison for over 10 years with hard labor. Somebody that slept in seven star hotels, flown first class, you know, in flight, spoke to presidents, did amazing things, is now sleeping on bare floor in in someone prison. These people were all Christians who sat in church. None of them are Muslims. Seventeen. They were all people who sat in church Sunday morning every day. So then I come to a realization that the people who come to church, not all of them are born again. This is the reason why I'm going to boldly tell you that First Peter chapter 4 and 17, judgment will begin from the house of God. And so if you feel that church is the, is the exit route and you are using church to cover your, your whatever, I really want to tell you that judgment will not begin in the club. It will not begin with Boko Haram. It will not begin with al Shabab. Judgment will start from bishops, apostles, evangelists. It will begin from altar workers. We who stand on the altar proclaiming and presenting ourselves as if we know God more than anybody. It will begin with us. Then it will continue with you who sit in the pew every Sunday who boast of A, B, and C that are in the church or in Christ. You are the next group of people that judgment will begin with. In other words, God is going to place everybody's works on the winnowing fan. Matthew chapter number 3 and uh, he was making a discourse in, uh, in verse number 10 upwards when he made a submission. He said, in, uh, he said now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit the Bible said shall be hewn and cast into fire. And then when he goes further in verse number 12 the bible said clearly he said whose fun is in his hand and the bible said he will thoroughly purge the floor and gather his wheat into the garner but the bible said the chaff he shall burn with an unquenchable fire you may be seated in the presence of god allow me to develop you know and so therefore i see that eternal life is being disseminated to people on a on a sunday but listen it's very easy for me to it's very very easy for me to preach to people in the ghettos I go to the ghettos and, uh, you know, the reception they give me in the ghettos are far, far more than the reception they give me in Alabaster International Ministry. The people who receive me at the ghettos, they do it with not a smile, but with excitement, enthusiasm. They are too crazy to see me. Sometimes they feel the, the expression on their faces are like, uh, what have we done to merit this visit? That is the expression on their faces. I see people on Sunday morning sometimes who are going through too many problems. They have frowned their faces and I see them that sometimes I need to go close to them and say, hello, sweet. How are you? How are you doing? I, I need to be able to do that. 
Now who join me? I join you, Mister Saying. You know who join me, Mister Saying. I need people who are excited to receive the gospel. And when I preach in places like in the schools and all that, I see people who are too willing to receive the gospel. But here in church, we have people who have stayed in church for 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years, and have become extremely familiar with God and the altar, the atmosphere, the spirit, the anointing, the presence of God, the things of God, the grace, the callings of God. They have become so, you know, uh, familiarized with the things of God to the point, ladies and gentlemen, to the point that they do not even have any awe that God is a supernatural working God who does miracles so great because we have seen the miracles so much to the point that now we have neutralized it. I realized from my research in these 17 people, ladies and gentlemen, that you know they have neutralized God. And uh, the churches in uh, Ephesus, uh, Revelation chapter 1 and verse 11, will be my, my cause. Uh, you know, the churches in, uh, in uh, Ephesus and Samina and Pegamos and Thyatira and uh, Sardis and Philadelphia and Laodicea are not just church. There is also some attitudinal proclivities and some kind of character um, deficiencies or possibly character. Uh, uh, you know propensities or tendencies that went with them that were supposed to bless them but turned out to curse them so people are sitting in church calling the name of Jesus and yet they have nothing to show for of 20 years of being in Christ so listen attentively and ladies and gentlemen i'm not talking about material stuff cars houses land and money that's not what i'm talking about drop it aside because god has given 17 Ghanaian young men money power influence and giving them exposure and nothing did they do with it and I checked very clearly. I saw the character of Ephesus and Samina and Sardis and Titeria and Pegamos and uh, Philadelphia and Laodicea in the lives of 17 Ghanaian young men. To the point that you can have one sitting in his own prisons. Do you know what that is? That is an indictment to the church in the name of Jesus. That is an indictment. Anybody who disgraces yourself as a child of God, you are not doing it just to yourself. You have done it to the kingdom of God and to the name of Christ. It is to the integrity or is against the integrity of Christ. Because you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. What we are talking about here is not nonsense. We are disseminating eternal life, showing the narrow way to Christ. Because you are a stranger and a pilgrim on earth. Whether you believe it or not, your gray hair is a statement to you every day. Your gray hair. That we are all passing away. And this is why I'm not going to be here celebrating your new car you bought. Because it's vanity. Your new car you bought, it is of no account. Your new house we dedicated. We thank God that he has given you a place to lay your head. The day you die, people who never struggle, who have never labored, will take it, snatch it away from your, hus your, your husband, your wife, and snatch it away from your children. You don't want confusion. You better start writing your will. You don't want confusion. Better start writing your will. Which is no indication that you are going to die, but indication that you are a wise person. You better start writing your will. I watched a funeral service recently. I look at the person who had died. I look at the wealth she has accumulated and made the name she has made and all that. I look at the size of her coffin. Then I ask myself, why are we then, why are we then destroying ourselves and why do we hate each other so much? Even in church. 
I see Ephesus in church. Let's read Revelation chapter 2 very quickly. Verse number 1, the Bible said clear here. In the word of the Lord, Revelation, the second chapter, the first verse. I will want to um, work with that particular scripture. I'm having too many scriptures, sweetie. Uh, focus on what you are doing. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? These things say that he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven can golden candlesticks. In the second verse, the Bible said, I know your works and your labor and your patience. How you canest not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, which are not, and found them to be lies. In the third verse, the Bible said, and has born and has patience for for tendency into GNT was continued from there. You are patient and you have suffered for my sake and you have not given up. And then he goes where that but this is what I have against you. You do not love me now as you did at first. God is saying you do not love me now as you did at first. You, you do not love me now. That means that Christianity is not just dressing and showing up. It's, it's not just, it is just like God telling uh, Hosea, the prophet, who has never lived a promiscuous life, never lived a promiscuous life before. The Bible said God came to Hosea and said, boy, I want you to go out of church into the club and look for a, a, a harlot, a prostitute, a call girl, a mistress, and I want you to marry her and I want you to love her. Marrying somebody is not the same as loving her. Because you are now dealing with the God who is looking at conscience, motive, and heart. So then, it is not the same. I can marry you and not love you because we have the ability to pretend. I can do that nicely. There are many people seated here who are living in pretentious relationships. There are people who are here and, and I tell the women, by the time you know the man does not love you, you already have three children. By the time you realize that this whole thing was a fallacy, it was just a myth, it was just a facade, your, your heart is deep into it already. So the Bible tells you not to give your heart to the dogs and do not give your pearls to the swine. He makes it a submission to you very clearly. Now whilst I develop, you, you do not love me now as you did before. In other words, yeah, you were here now strictly speaking, you cannot just, you know, kalabashada that receive communion, clap, jump around and sing and that is Christianity. No, it means also that Christianity goes beyond the outward appearance into the purity of your heart. I'm just talking about God looks at the heart and man looks at the outward appearance. No, God judges the heart. He doesn't just looks at it. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse number 9, the Bible said, the heart is desperately wicked above all things. The Bible said, who can know it? He goes in verse number 10 and said, I the Lord, I search the heart. I try the rings even to give unto every man according to their ways. If he's going to give according to them, he is judging to give rewards or to give pen penalties or judgment. So it's not just, you do not love me as you used to. Let's read Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2. Maybe you will have a portrait of what I'm really talking about. Sweet, I want to see Jesus. And as I'm standing here, if there is anything that I seek to do is to finish the will of God upon the earth. And uh, if there is one place that I seek and desperately want to be, it's not America, it's not Ghana, it's not UK, it's not South Africa, it's not Switzerland. I want to make heaven. I want to make heaven. If I feel like you are an obstacle, I take you out of my way because I want to make heaven. At all costs, I have to make heaven. Don't sit here as if life is all about this one. Because, because yes, upon this life is not about all this one. And Timam, I'm telling you, we have a place to go. There are two destinations waiting for all of us. We are all not going to the same destination. I will not deceive you. 
I will not deceive you. I will not tell you we are all going to heaven. It's a lie. Because you don't know the kind of lies people sitting here, what they do. Yeah, it's a lie for me to, oh, you can clap your hands, my darling. Dear heaven is real. Heaven is real. I will not wait for you to die for me to preach a sermon you, would, you wouldn't hear. For us to sing a song you wouldn't hear. I'm reminding you the trumpet is sounding. If there is any repentance, do it now. Because time does not belong to you. This life, it doesn't belong to you. Our sister, you know, sitting here beautifully. Today I'm so excited to see you at the front because normally your husband is a back person and then you will sit with your husband. Always his hand is round around you in church. Sometimes he will pull your head and put it on his shoulder. If somebody had told me that we won't finish this year with that young man, I wouldn't believe it. That he is gone. So you are seated here. I am not going to be deceiving you. There are two destinations waiting for all of us. Daniel chapter 12 verse number 2 says, Some will go to eternal life, others to eternal domination. Yeah. You will not go to eternal life because you are a good man or a good woman. Good men don't go there. Good women don't go there. Saved, saved, saved people go there. Saved people go there. Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse number 2. The Bible was making an interesting submission. GNT, let's see how Bible talks here. He said, to go and proclaim this message to everyone in Jerusalem, I remember how faithful you were when you were young. How you loved me. When you first married. You followed me through the desert, through the land that had not been planted. In the third verse, the Bible says, Israel, you belong to me alone. You are my sacred possession. I send suffering and disaster to everyone who hurt you. I am the Lord. I have spoken in the fourth verse, the Bible says, listen to the message. Uh, listen to the Lord's message. You descendants of Jacob and tribes of Israel. In the fifth verse, the Bible says, the Lord says, what accusation did your ancestors bring against me? What, what did your ancestors tell you about me? What made you turn away from me? They worship what Wetless idols and became wetless themselves. Yeah, 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 bosom for man, yeah. Or china would the anti abosom for man. Wetless idols produce wetless people. Wetless idols produce wetless people. And so the moment they get some little wealth. Greed, jealousy, envy, selfishness, I take it all. They don't share with anybody. So 17 Ghanaian young men, I saw wealth with them. They can rent a plane and fly it and their girlfriends and their friends and their girlfriends also are in the plane. And that is where they are having a party. With depositors' funds. Some other people's money because of greed. Greed. When we talk about Galamse for just one week, we are going to push it aside and life continues normally. But people will die from that canker and menace. Canker! Now that the church at least is starting to talk, they may feel, oh, let's wake up and do something about it. Let's issue a communique. Let's issue a statement and then let them uh, know that we are doing something about it. Let me tell you boldly. In my little research that I'm standing here as your pastor, there have never been any fight against Galamse. Never. Wicked people are looting this miserable nation. This is only a voice in the wilderness crying, warning you because judgment is resting on your head until you repent. If you do not, you will die like dogs and goats 
who which does not belong to anybody. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Never has there been any fight against anything. I read a report by the Chinese ambassador when we accused him of his people destroying our nation. It was like a spit in the face. First thing he issued, Chinese don't know where mining sites are. It is Ghanaians that take them there. First thing he said, how can you dispute that? Number two, Ghanaians have rights to land. Chinese don't. So how did they have rights? Last thing the people said, the Chinese doing that, they know they can't do that in China. So why have we allowed them to do it here? A sensible person is speaking to this nation the Bible calls foolish. A sensible person is speaking to a foolish nation. People are dying. Have you ever seen people dying from kidney rain out these people? You will not talk about kidney. As we are talking about panning there. Other people have put their microphone in nonsensical uh, uh, press conference. Greed! Greed. That same greed is why somebody will chase somebody's wife. My did they sit in here? Why will somebody think that he wants my did they? Yeah. For 25 years I have been loving this girl. She was not like this. I was not like that. Huh? Why will somebody want my baby? I have decided I don't want any of the girls in the world. This one. Why will somebody want mine? Change your mind. Change your mind. So Jehovah is speaking in Jeremiah and said, Israel, you are my only wife. Why have you turned to other men? Why? What did your ancestors tell you? Why have you turned away from me? Isaiah chapter 1 verse 21 is an interesting verse of scripture. 22 and 23. I read that clo closely. As the Bible said, the city that was once faithful has be is behaving like a harlot. A whore, a prostitute. The city that was. You see, when God is dealing with a nation, with a people, He deals with them like He is dealing with a human being. Not just any human being, a wife material. At one time, it was filled with righteous people, but now only murderers remain. He goes in verse 22 and says, Jerusalem, you were once like sober, but now you are wetless. You were like good wine, but now you are only water. Turn it into my language. Let me read this. The Bible said here, you know, he said in my language, you know, Look at the way young people are running away from this nation as if they have met a beast. Why? Why? And my job is not only to take you to heaven. My job also is to make you the salt of the earth and the light of the world and to fulfill your life and your assignment on earth. Oh, clap your hands, people. Responsibility, responsible people. School have reopened. Which parent is sitting here will behave as if there is no responsibility? Which parent? Why in the beginning to say you be my? Which responsible parent will see the child and tell you, see you in the afternoon? Which responsible parent will look in the eyes of a child and uh, you know when the child is asking for feeding 
feet will tell the person that is what we have become we have become like a flock without a shepherd my job is not just to a, a person it's to this nation it's to the body of Christ everybody repent get back in line your God is calling you back into repentance in the cemetery we met in the who he it is written a hukuga rather the they've written in the in front of the cemetery we were once like you at the back of the signboard you will soon become one of us yeah it's a statement that spoke to me we were once like you you will soon become one of us you can bind it all you can i shall not die but leave and declare the works of god she i'm telling you repent and align with the grace and the cause of god's word so that when he appears in his glory you will not be found wanting sometimes when i look at the irresponsibility because some has money and how they speak irresponsibly. We are looking for opportunities to go into the schools to go and preach the gospel and there are certain schools who have put their foot down and said we don't want Kofi Udru here. School! Ministry of Education listen to what I'm saying. There are some schools here in Ghana which have put their foot down. Kofi Udru don't come here. So I want to ask, how did politicians enter into the school? Now you see children are killing each other. Continue to put your foot down. Yeah. By asking what it is school, you who are not a bit tuning now. By the time we know now what this what actually cervical cancer and what you are to a yas. A politician to go into a girl school. Girl school. And speaking to girls. Don't worry, the headmaster. I when I saw the video on UTV yesterday, I cried. I cried. I said, really? Oh, I, that, uh, I, the headmaster is, your headmaster is my friend, so don't worry. Vote for me, and I will let him give all of you exeat. To go and do what? We send the children to school. What do they need exeat for? They are to go to school. Why do they want to come out? Why? Now, this is how cheap voting has become. You are so dead. I am still repeating. We don't care about your election. I'm boldly telling you, men, girls, you are speaking to girls. If, can you imagine that I went to a secondary school and I gathered only girls to a corner? Kofi Odro gathered only girls to a corner. Can you imagine what the reportage will be? A male politician is speaking to girls. Secular musicians go and they are gladly received into secondary schools. Occultists are gladly received into secondary school. Preacher is rejected. Anybody that rejects God goes through many troubles. And Ghana, I can boldly tell you, all your suffering is because you have rejected God. Where is your wisdom if you reject God? Jeremiah 8, the Bible said clearly, Jeremiah chapter, yeah. He said, they have rejected the word of the Lord. And what wisdom is there in them? In my language, the Bible said here, and God, who is your guiding light? You reject God. How are you going to prosper? 
How are you going to prosper? As I close this service, Jesus is standing at the door of your heart. This morning! And he is knocking. If any man will hear him and open up, sweetie, you have the opportunity to make amends right now. As you are alive. Don't miss the opportunity. I will never come to your funeral and lie. If you were wicked, I will tell your family and your cops you were wicked. Wicked man. Wicked woman. And I will not say things like, may the Lord give you a peaceful rest. I don't know how to say that. You live your life. I am coming to tell you, may the Lord. Oh, not your, your life and your convictions could not do that. Man, I'm a Becca's awesome. We pray that the Lord will grant him a resting place. Who said that? Who may the Lord grant him Jenna? Who, who, who said so? You don't have that right to even pray that prayer because the prayer for the dead is not answered. We are praying it to make the funeral nice. Nice funeral. It was a nice funeral. May the Lord grant him the bosom of Abraham. And the shoulders of Elijah. Just to make it beautiful. I said, Elijah shoulder. Where we hold her? Why did me after Elijah shoulder? And more bread here. We can't come to your funeral and be saying all these things. We be have worried the men and them putting up for change. What you want? You in a me? My baby preacher for the funeral. And I me say, we nyame na atun za friend. So I me here. Nyame so I dey here. I stand at your funeral and tell you, you are on your way to hell. Burn in hell. Burn in hell. Ghana, your leaders will burn in hell. I told you, Ghanaian leaders, you will perish and burn in hell. Fire. Fire. Ghana for you will burn in hell. Sorry, Mungo. Yeah, the Sorry, Today, 